Chapter 1 It all started when I remembered the grand event like it was Lasterday. Chapter 1 It all started when I remembered the grand event like it was Lasterday, probably because it was Lasterday. I was sitting in my room playing on my Purple Game Noy Advance SB Blue Edition when I heard a wicked wailing emitting from the room of the room. It almost sounded like a holocaust. Right then, memories struck my feeble mind. Images of the horrors flashing before my very own two and a half innocent eyes. It was then, when I realized my mummy's room was the room to the north, the very same north that had contained the wicked Whalen. Gathering all my might, I ran into the room, but to my shock, my father was not there. Suddenly I realized this was due to him abandoning us 56 years ago, back when I was a fully grown little boy. Stumbling in my sorrow, I, to my horror, traumatizingly pivoted my head at a 105-degree angle to your left to see my poor old bedridden mother. Something was gravely wrong, though, as it took me three whole minutes to see she had been crucified above the soft wooden bed frame. Taking the whole picture in, I suddenly spotted a small, goblin-like man in a white hoodie, equipped with a big, stinky knife. He gazed upon me with a dishonorable, greedy, almost shit-eating grin that spread ear to ear. Just as I was working up the nerve to say something, he proceeded to monstrously jump through my family's signature stained glass window, shattering it brutally and without mercy. I intently gazed at my mother, who was brutally hung by the cruelly and crudely stabbed knives through her hands, pierced into the almost opaque cotton wall. While staring at the wall with my hyper-realistic bloodshot eyes, I began screaming at my friends as to just how nearly opaque this almost cotton wall seemed to be. Oh, this wall, how impenetrable it was. It felt like, for the first time in many eons, I felt truly, utterly, and completely hopeless. Out of the blue, I had just acquired an odd thought, a type of thought only a thought could have possibly conjured, meaning, this couldn't possibly be of my own craft. Wary, I then cautiously proceeded to grab the knife on the floor, raising it to my cold, pale face. Staring at the simple knife, I began to see my own battered and bloodied reflection. As the camera zoomed in, I thought to myself rather loudly, maybe I can be dot dot dot, Jeff dot dot dot, the killer dot 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 dot, two dot dot dot. As I shouted this, I unpulled my feeble mother out of the way, all the while stabbing the opaque, nearly cotton wall, making it a point to show little to no mercy. The wall did was wall always do and doing nothing. What like a wall to wall like do? I deeply contemplated the quote. Soon after, I leapt magnificently out of the war-torn window, just like the young little lad whom was wearing the rugged white hoodie did before me. A few moments later, I landed in a stubby, almost mushy-like bush hailing from the outside realms. During the landing, I had nearly broken every bone in my fragile, delicate femboy body, although there was nothing to worry about, seeing as I had absorbed my mother's vital essence. I was able to make a quick and swift recovery. After doing so, I ran into the direction of that odd little fellow who just moments ago calmly killed my own blood mother mere seconds ago, before, ago. I cared little about the tragedy, however, as days earlier she had recently taken away my Xbox Mountain Dew edition and hid it in a place she knew I'd have no hope of ever getting my grubby little hands on. Several months later, after waking up from a graceful slumber in the lumpy bush, I happened upon a man with a black hoodie and a beard on the side of the street. It must be him, I moaned arousingly. With at least five percent of my total strength, I hurled the knife lazily in his general direction. This resulted in the bouncing of the knife along the averagely moist, disease-ridden asphalt before swiftly landing near his big black stompy boots. He overshot his glance towards me and said, Yo, dog, I think you dropped your totally sharp knife over here, bro. Filled with pure, unadulterated rage, I proceeded to clobber the innocent man brutally using the strength I'd accumulated over the past fifteen seconds, flowing with adrenaline and gushing with one singular, extremely potent emotion. It was too late. The man was barely breathing after I'd realized what I did. 
I glanced over to him and said, You're not the little sunny boy that killed my hag of a mother. I apologized profusely, chucking a dollar five one half pound dollar coin down his throat, almost grateful for the deed I had done. He started beautifully singing songs of the Mongolian throat variety, before stopping suddenly and abruptly. The man turned blue from pure incomprehensible joy. I smiled, thonking to myself, all in a day's work, thanks to me. Not wanting to spoil the moment, I left the man behind knowing he was a capable adult and ran into the needlessly calming Britannian sunny set sunset. Sunset. Chapter 3 The next day, I noticed there were missing posters plastered all around the town. They were describing a person who looked extremely similar to a man nearly like my own. This is not including the fact a name was present. Extremely similar to a man nearly like my own. Must be my twin from the fifth dimension again, I thought. You know, I always thought of myself as the more responsible, mature, and well-mannered of the two. As he was involved in all sorts of crimes over the years, it certainly didn't help his case. A nice gaggle of police officers walked by and looked at me with a nearly hostile sight. He pointed hey! at me with his long, protruding, nearly claw-like finger and called three more fine chaps over to my location. Aha! Just as I had thought. They started doing splutendously gracious cartwheels towards my immediate vicinity, almost comparable to that of a graceful rolling tire of a Ford F-150. I ran, as they must have thought I was my 15. 35th dementia-ridden twin brother. In an act of defiance, I superfilously cartwheeled down the street as well, not taking too kindly to this act of rebellion. They yelled, Jeff Hash 2, come back here. I retorted, no, 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 you have been greatly mistaken. I'm Jeff the Killer, dot, 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 two. As we cartwheeled, I had suddenly remembered why I was given the birth title of Jeff Hash 2 originally. Early on, my parents had a child named Jeffrey. And so, when I was born at a very young age, they thought it would be rather redundant to name their second child Jeffrey Hash 2. Taking this into consideration, they then opted for the name Jeff Hash 2. After the daydream and feeling quite dizzy after the chase, I embarrassingly fell face first into a giant, gaping, deep, deep, dark manhole. The gaggles arrived soon afterwards. Well, he is rather dead, don't you quite agree, Officer Muffin Chops? Thinking this my darkest day, I realized this was really a blessing from the heavens above. Perhaps my prayers to the Lord had been answered. This filthy enclosure of pure disease was really the young lad's hideout all along hiding beneath our cozy, small, peaceful town, right in plain sight. With not a moment to process, I saw a dark figure pouring what seemed to be an awfully smelly brown liquid out of a rather weird, squared, realistic, blood-red colored container. Spotting me, he then spit only a single tiny little spark from his chapped, bloodied mouth, which then proceeded to land in the strange container, causing the liquid within to ignite, engulfing the entire sewer in a violent, raging fire. Chapter 6 Seeing the strange boy's silhouette behind the cold firewall, I stared at it and yelled, Boy, boy, is that you, boy? Question mark? The boy who murdered my horrendous mother in the blood of the cold? Question mark? Are you that boy? Question mark? Uh, who the flip are you? Question mark? The little young lad, whom was adorning the white hoodie, said. I stared at him blankly and yelled with the might of two men. What? His singular brain cell not being able to comprehend the loud noise that I'd just unleashed upon him was scrambled in sheer confusion. Seizing the opportunity, I violently and proudly stomped my way towards him. Fearing for his life, he then chucked his knife at my stomach, piercing me in my singular vital organ and causing me a massive tumble as I fell down into onto the murderous fire below. This is what I get for plagiarizing on that English test, I thought. The story about Mario and the legend of the stolen Game Boy Advance SP Blue Edition was too good not to write about, though. He looked over at me for what I could only assume would be the final time. He began to utter softly, Looks like you learned your lesson, but now it's time to go dot 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 to dot 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 bed. 
as he then carelessly stabbed me through my vital organ once more. This time it caused nearly all of my essential oils to spill onto the melting floor below. The vicious pain lasted for an agonizing one and a half seconds before I succumbed to my injuries and fatally died. The End Chapter 5 The End